It's the Zach Sang Zach Sang Show. Show. Zach Sang Show. Hey. Hey guys. Whoa. What? This is Jill. Hi, Jill. Hi, Jill. Good to meet you. This is Dan. Dan. Nice to meet you. Hey, Keith. Keith with the beard. Woo. Killing nice it. to meet you. And that's Heather and Lewis in the other room. Hi, guys. All right. We'll go straight in. We're going to go right into it, my friend. Zach Sang Show. <laughs> right now in the studio, Chris Martin, Coldplay. Hello. Hi, Zach. Hi, guys. How hey. are you? Lovely to be here. An honor to have you here, sir. Seriously. Well, that's very sweet of you to say. It's an honor to be here. I mean, it really, you said it before. You didn't really need to do radio, right? You didn't need to go and like hit up radio stations, hang out with people, but you wanted to do it. Like You, you were down for it, and this is a big deal for us. You really? Know? Well, that's, you're making me feel very uh, special. Thank you. Uh, no, the truth is, we. I don't know why, but we're just in the mood to talk a bit at the moment <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> and we have a, a few weeks between legs of tour so it's just nice to come in and say hi also people play our songs and sometimes it's nice to go and say thanks for doing that and, <laughs> and from a radio perspective like we appreciate it yeah. because not everybody does that you know i mean it's very rare when you get somebody of your status in this industry to take the time and you know come actually to the radio studio and Meet the team, and it really means more than you'll Wash ever your know. Wash your clothes so. and yeah. clean your shoes. <laughs> I'm, I'm you just available. made Craig's day, you know, our engineer, so that's nice. Is, does that ever get, are you used to that yet? Like, simple things that you can do that really can make somebody's day, week, month, whatever? Uh, no, I don't. I haven't thought about it like that. Really? No, but thanks. You're saying lovely things, man. No wonder you're a popular DJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a head full of dreams. Maybe we'll feel good. The album out now. Uh, I mean, different album for you guys, kind of. I mean, we were debating this, right? Because we're looking at a, a host of different Coldplay fans of all different albums, of all different, yeah. you know, I want to see kind of almost generations, right? Different you, you versions. You can say, you can actually, we probably are into our second generation now. Yeah. Insane for you to really think about? It really is. And I'll tell you why is that, because we just started touring again. We did, we just came back from South America and just, we're playing these giant places and just looking out I, it's just crazy to me the age differences between the front row <laughs> the, you know the front is all the people who've come yeah. into our music in the last couple of albums and then as it goes back you get you know further back towards the year 2000 and it's just amazing to me why do you think Coldplay had that staying power because you know some could say that that staying power and that that relevancy for all those years it doesn't exist in music today uh, well, I, it, I mean, there's a few people. There's Beyonce, and I, yeah. you know, some people. Uh, Taylor Swift will be around. You know, Jay Z, and um, if we do have that, and thank you for saying it, I think that because we've never been the most fashionable number one thing, we've always appealed to a certain group of pe people a lot, yeah. and and we we just kind of do what we do, and we don't. Um, yeah, I don't think it's ever been like blanket coverage of it's only yeah. Coldplay all the time. It, it's just like we've always been a, a, a bit of a thing to find, I think. Yeah. And I think there's been an evolution in music too, in tone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. as the albums have progressed and gone on. Yeah. Well, we, the truth is we and I are always excited about music and new music and new sounds. And so to keep ourselves excited, we're always trying to find new ways of making music and how it sounds. And and also the songs that come through from wherever songs come from, they just naturally have been evolving over the years. Yeah. That the ones that come through now are so different to how they sounded 16 years ago or whatever. You know, I've done a, you know, a decent amount of research on you, obviously. How many minutes did you spend on Wikipedia? <laughs> okay. No, not just Wikipedia. I've done, so I love your Howard interview. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. Just between Howard, Robin, and you, I, there was moments in that interview where I felt like you almost played Howard a little bit more than he was ever playing you, and it was amazing. I love, you know what's so funny about that is um, for years I was just dreading the concept of even meeting Howard. Because I grew up with him being like the long haired nineties, exactly. you know, you know, diff slightly different Howard before yeah. he switched stations, and um, and then our manager Dave said, "One day you got to go into Howard Stern." So I, I really don't think <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> I'm in Coldplay, but um, I went in a few years ago, and it was just such a wonderful experience. And he yeah. was so sweet to me, and Robin was too. And then a few weeks ago, when when I went in again. I think, you know, they've both been on such journeys in their lives that they, they're mellow and it, it was just a thrill. It, that, their journey and their connection, and you even, you even mentioned it when you were talking yeah. to them, it's really a beautiful thing. It really is, and, it, and it's testament. I'm, I don't know how long you guys have been working together. How long have you been together? Heather and I have been together for six and a half years. Okay. Dan uh, and I have been together for four. Jill's only a year. 
Well, they, well, welcome to the family. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I have no right to say that. But, no, uh, welcome. <laughs> on behalf of the Zach Zang team, I'd <laughs> like to you, say... Thank you, Chris Martin. Well done, Jill. Um, <laughs> the only way to be accepted. Yeah. Feels good. Um, you know, anything great creatively often comes from chemistry because yeah. somehow you can... Sometimes people do things all on their own. You know, you get your JK Rowling's and stuff, but often when you have people that can surprise each other creatively or just feel safe with each other so that one of them can be the gregarious out there person, the other one anchors it down. I mean, that's what bands are. And so anytime I spot that somewhere else, I'm always keen to say it like, yeah. hey, protect that thing that's got you where you are. Because um, often it's the people behind the lens that are just as important as the people in front. And that gives me goosebumps. One, because you're so accurate. And two, because you don't just preach it, you practice it, right? You and Phil connected when you were 13. Yes, that's right. Our, he's our creative director, sort of, he's behind the scenes. Do you remember that first meeting with him? I, I, do you want me to be graphically honest? Yeah. I do, because <laughs> uh, I was 13 and a half and he was almost 14, which oh, at that time was basically difference. like, yeah, different generations. So. <laughs> He had a lot more <laughs> hair <laughs> and world. a much lower voice. And he was like a giant. And this was at a new, we were both new at this boarding school. So I was like, I need to attach myself to this guy because he's going to basically protect me. Because <laughs> 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 he's huge and great at sport. And then we really bonded over music. You know, we were, he would tell me about REM and the police he was really into at that time. And Phil Collins, you know, all these people. And we just... And then his best friend at that time had a blues band. He was a year older than us, and he asked me to be in that band and play piano. And so we just started to gravitate towards music together. But yeah, he he and I have been together s since then. And then eighteen, the other guys jo you joined the 18, band. Eighteen, nineteen, yeah, yeah. And your life changes forever. You do. I mean, how many bands did you go through before Coldplay actually became a thing? <clears throat> With right? that group of people, yeah, it was. No, but it was, when we were called something else for about a week. Okay. Yeah, but and, not nothing. Serious. And where'd Coldplay come from? Just wondering. Coldplay, I have a friend who's about to get married called Tim who would burn through band names okay. for his own band. And we were one of his rejected <laughs> names. <laughs> <laughs> you looked through his rejected list and that Essentially, was Essentially, yeah. Essentially, that's what happened. Wow. Yeah. And he's about to get married and I'm going to have to thank him and I'm the best man. So I've got to mention that. Do you have a speech ready? No, I, I've got to get on with that. Yeah, I mean, that's like... <laughs> I a, keep that, doing radio interviews. Yeah, you're busy, you know? I mean, you could practice here if you want. Like, we can, you know... I have an idea for something to do for his thing. Well, you need you need jokes, right? That's the big deal. And you need to, like, you need to reference the fact that, like, oh, we never thought that you, the two of you would be perfect for each other, and he's a mess, you know? You need those jokes, It sounds jokes, like you right? do this every weekend. No, I, 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 I want him. <laughs> and I just helped my friend write his, because he's you ever now done the best one? man. No. I'm only 22, or I just turned 23 on Monday. Okay, happy, oh, happy birthday. Thank you. So so no weddings yet in my future. Not yet, at least. Okay, and is your shirt, is your beard shirt like aspirational, or yeah. what's the deal? It really <laughs> is, because I really want a beard. I I can't grow outside of like under my chin and under my nose. The sides won't grow at all. So I saw it in West Hollywood when I was walking around, and I was like, you know what? Inspiration, man. I see. Yeah. It'll come, don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> don't hurry growing up, young man. Yeah. <laughs> it will come soon. Okay. Everything in time. A head full of dreams. The tour's going on now. You just got off the South American line. Yeah. I mean, when the crowds, the show, does it ever... How do you keep it fresh? Because it's not your first rodeo. It's your thousands, ten thousands. I mean, you've been doing it. Well, here's how we keep it fresh. Bruce Springsteen, apparently, I don't know if he really does or not, used to say to the rest of the E Street Band... This could be someone's first show and it could be someone's last show. So let's treat it like that. So I have a, that inspiration and then, then some other things in my life that just make me... But every time before we go on stage, I really think about like who's showed up, how much they've been through to get there. Wow. And also for us at the moment, we're just so... In, we took a break from touring on the last album we did it called Ghost Story. So we're so, exci we're so excited to be there. And we know that nothing lasts forever. So I think that we just really more than ever living in the moment and and trying to appreciate the fact that for some people it's their first show and some yeah. people you know you know and that has to be a perspective that that's not immediate right you learn no, you have that to perspective. work to that perspective yeah we definitely went through a period about 10 years ago of, of feeling like what are we doing you know questioning everything and not really t able to take in the joy of it that must have been hard it was well, it was i mean everything's in perspective but yeah. for us as a band it was a bit hard like what are we you know but but slowly you just you, you keep going and you find great people who come in and help you out and teach you things and 
And I think the more that you, the more that you let in, it's it's very easy right now with social media to let in anything negative. You know, what, yeah. whatever you do, someone is gonna slag it off online. Well, you're not on social media at all. Personally, I mean, we yeah. are as a band. I don't as really personally do it. I, I'm not that good at selfies. Is the <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's the, the honest answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, 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 so I made a decision that well, you know, it's easy to take in the bad stuff. So I'm going to really take in the good stuff yeah. and appreciate who these people have shown up and they want to sing our songs together and that's great i'm into it <laughs> Does you know it, it can't ever so get it's old very fresh it never gets old that's the thing it never gets old you were performing with an eighth grade rock band the other day no that was cool i mean <laughs> that i like that it was pretty amazing yeah you know raspberry beret fix you they well, were called the a sides they, they were a pretty good band i mean they were great a little sloppy there's a lot of people up on stage there's a big band it was a big band but y you killed it they, and they were so wasted as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've Rob never Clark. seen anyone drink so much. <laughs> when you get up on stage and you perform with those kids and you see the look in their eye, I mean, and you're seeing Fix You next to them. I mean, one, that's making their dreams come true. But two, you're also, you're inspiring the next generation of musicians. Like that interaction with them could keep music in this world going forward for years <clears throat> and years to come. Well, what was great about that is these kids uh, had organized this concert um, to raise money for... Um, you know, children's cancer research yeah. because that one of the guys in the band had, has been through cancer twice, yeah. and so that's and then and then they now they have this thing of trying to ask a more well-known older musician to come and join them, <laughs> and so I was that, and uh, for me it was just it was crazy. I went to rehearse with them in a room about the size of your studio, not that big, and everything sounded exactly how I remember things sounding when I was fourteen or fifteen, and and that excitement of being in a band for the first time. So, so for me, it was a real thrill. And then they'd learned like a really obscure Coldplay song, which we'd never sung before. And then we, then, then I said that we've got to learn Raspberry Beret because of Prince. Yeah. And they did that in like, it was just so fun to, uh, I mean, we're, we're in a place where we're feeling that enthusiasm naturally as a band, but it was nice to see that in someone else. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Next generation of music. You yeah. listen to the radio today, yeah. you embrace pop, you mm. look at the alternative tracks. Mm. I feel like you're very connected to it, or at least I've heard from you know other people who have come on the show and you know label people that you are connected to pop. Like yeah, you, you, you feel like there's there's a certain home there. And I try and keep up with. I mean, I'm not quite as good as some people in terms of knowing everything that's out, but I yeah, my ears just naturally get really excited by. I don't know how you can tell if an ear is excited. Or not, <laughs> they start wiggling. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So sometimes my ears wiggle in terms of like, what, what is that sound? Like yeah. when, when uh, I took a pill in Ibiza came out, so good. my whole body was like, what is that? Just something about the sound of it, made, it tasted like chocolate, you know? Yeah. And the, the lyrics were impactful and they were, it was yeah. great. But that come, that's a remix. So that comes from the, the original version of that is so different. I don't know if you've ever heard I it. Have, I have a huge fan of Mike Posner. Okay. Massive. And so, the, it's acoustic, really, yeah, the original like the version. Yeah, slow acoustic country song. And, and so... Sometimes music still has the ability to fascinate me because the song itself is great, but then the way it's produced, it's by this, the production is by this guy called Sieb, who are Norwegian. You know, it, you couldn't have made music sound like that 10 years ago. So yeah. the technology of music is always moving forward, plus the soulfulness and emotion of it will always stay. And when those two things meet, I get really happy. And, and th that's technology that you didn't have when you were first starting, right? No. So your, your creative vision for Coldplay and your music, it's evolved over the years. Yeah. And, and you, you go to people like Stargate. Yeah. You know, I, the guy, he's one of the best out there, really, in that world. He is, and so is the other one. There's, there's two of them. Yeah, Stargate, and who is the other producer? There's two people in Stargate. Okay, that's right. And like two in one. You know how at the end of Transformers, they all make one giant Transformer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to speak to your generation here. You're doing and, a great uh, job. It's pandering. <laughs> <laughs> or at least they did in the cartoon. I don't know if they do it in the movie. Do they do that no, they, thing? Well, they, I, think they, I know they do it in the cartoon. I think there's a scene in the movie where all the, the, the cars connect. Yeah. Yeah, and they like yeah, and they they build one. Uh, what's his name? I'm Optimus way off Prime. my comfort zone here. No, yeah, me too. Optimus Prime. Yeah. <laughs> I've done the Transformers ride at Universal. Okay, it's fun. It's a good one. It's wonderful. Yeah, good it's one. like it's like you, it's not a you you feel like you're on a roller coaster, but it isn't. No, it's wild. It's all yeah. the new things. Um, I sound like I'm plugging Universal Studios, <laughs> so, so I'll just keep going. The rides there are wonderful and very reasonably priced. <laughs> Check it out this weekend if you have nothing to do, okay? <laughs> Can we talk about Up and Up for a second? Sure thing. So how did that become the single? Because it's the last song on the album. 
Uh, is that the single? He, I don't. Well, I, I'm a little lost on what single is what in what country. I'll, I'll clarify. <laughs> I'll, I'll clear it up. Up and up is going to be the single for alternative, right? And then you have uh, him for the weekend featuring Beyonce, yes. and that is going to be your pop single. Yes, right. So, in answer to your question, I feel like on this album, A Head Full of Dreams, there's a few songs that we felt like would be good singles, and um, I always thought Up and Up might be what the last single. Um, because of what it's about it's the kind of our sort of belief system as a band really or, or it's the way up we're choosing to look at the world right now and then but then in some places they say oh can we go with that song this month and so we want to look after our label and everything so so yeah so we say yeah do what you want. <laughs> and we have a video that's probably going to come out next week and yeah so i don't really mind what order the singles come out in as, as long as it's the songs that we like and then, okay, a hymn for the weekend, right? Featuring Beyonce. Yeah, that's a pretty insane collaboration. You guys, yeah. you 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 knew each other through, you know, Super Bowl, and like obviously your worlds have collided or actually come close yes. to each other for many years. What is it like getting into the studio with each other? Like, what do you walk into that studio session with? Do you have an idea in your brain? Do you come slate clean? How do, how does it work? Uh, well, how it works is for a long time, I said to Beyonce, you know, when the right song comes along, is there any chance you would sing it with us? And she said, yeah. And that was about 10 years ago. Wow. And then, then it didn't really, this, this was the first song where I was like, oh, this is the one. Yeah. And um, so I just asked her if she'd come and do it. And we didn't go to a studio. We did it. We made a little room in a house for her, like a little Beyonce shrine. That's awesome. She came in and just blew us all away as, as she's wont to do. And um, it was just dreamy. Wow, and she sang some backing stuff on some other songs. So, so she was just really gracious and as as great as you would want her, imagine her to be. Amazing. Before we wrap it up, one more question. Yeah. What would you tell eighteen year old Chris Martin right now? Um, I would. Well, I believe in the Back to the Future thing. If you shouldn't meet your past self, otherwise it distorts <laughs> the future. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You know how Doc in Do you yes. watch Back to the Future? He says, "Whatever you do, don't meet yourself." So I, I, I have to do what Doc Brown says. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's so your Bible. So I can't Bible. answer your question. <laughs> Wait, if I have a few questions quickly yeah. when you have a second. I have a second right now. I have 20 yeah. seconds. <laughs> what, do, your, do your kids think you're cool or are they embarrassed by you? That depends on the situation. That's very interesting. In our, <laughs> in our concerts, they think I'm, they, I think they think I'm okay, acceptable. They'll come on stage. Then they love to work there. If I'm on the side of one of their games and jumping up and down too much, then they might be like, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so it very much varies. Okay. Um, Anything else? Of course. That's a great question. Um, so how long do you see Coldplay going for? Do you guys see yourself making more albums or touring or do you uh, want to take a break? Well, we're definitely going to tour probably th through this year and I imagine through the whole of next year because we're having such a great time. Mm -hmm. And life is unpredictable, so I don't know after that. We're trying to really embrace right now. Okay. Uh, right now I feel like we have... There's an, right now there's probably enough Coldplay songs in the world and we just put out <laughs> some that we really love so we're just enjoying that. So are you saying you don't plan on making another album? Right yeah. now, no. But, oh, okay. But we plan on just trying to make shows that if you like Coldplay, you have a great time. Amazing. Chris Martin, A Head Full of Dreams, The Tour Is Now, Album Out Now, Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> You're very, you guys are very sweet. No, thank I'm you. I'm going to stay here for the rest wait, of the wait, month. Wait, wait, one more thing. Wait, I was. They wrapped me up like like seven minutes ago. They uh, came in my. I didn't wrap anyone up. They Jessica up. Hiramoto comes into my studio uh, and she's the only uh, label rep uh, who wraps me up. <laughs> Okay. And I'm, I love you, but I he just keep going. I gotta. What's your last question? Well, do you kind of wish your Super Bowl performance was at night so you could use like lights and stuff? Because when you started performing, I was like, oh my god, it's daytime. Like this could be so much more fun or anything if you guys had lights and lasers and all that stuff. By the way, I have all the time in the world, so I want to answer your question uh, <laughs> properly. Don't worry, everybody. Everything's cool. <laughs> no. Um, the the Super Bowl was a real challenge for that reason, and that, I think no one's no one else has ever mentioned that. It's the first thing I noticed the, when you started performing. Because when they when they very kind, they said they came and they came to my house actually. Um, Ron and, and Sarah, these people from NFL, they said, you know, this we think this would, might be your year to do the halftime. And we said, and we had said previously, you know, anytime you need us, great, because we'd met them before, because we love that show. And they said the only thing is, there's a couple of things you might want to know. And I'd already said yes. <laughs> <laughs> they said it's the fiftieth year, so that brings a whole 
heap of stuff. And also it's daylight. And I was like, it's what now? <laughs> you know, we're in Copa, right? We rely heavily upon LEDs and uh-huh. lasers and all that stuff. But ultimately, it was wonderful for that because the thing we decided to do was to make it not really about Coldplay, not really about selling any songs or album or anything, but we wanted to just make it just a celebration of life and music. And that's why we asked Beyonce and Bruno and kind of gave up half the set. You know what I mean? So just because I, I felt like it was just important to have a message of that we all kind of exist together. Mm-hmm. That sounds, it sounds so weird saying it out loud, but, but I, in the lead up to it, all the news on TV had been so negative and um, everyone trying to split from everyone else yeah. and walls going up and everything. So I just, we just felt like, let's just do something where we just have a good time all together and we don't really worry about anything beyond that. And, that, and so the fact that it was daylight probably made that more human. Mm-hmm. So we didn't really want to hide behind anything. Beautiful. Chris Martin, big weekend, Mother's Day this weekend, anything special going on? Any plans with the fam? Anything? Yeah. Yeah? I don't know what. I think I might try and make uh, French toast. Very nice. <laughs> that's good. Well, that it sounds like, like spe- nothing. No, but is that your specialty? But for me, that's uh, that's basically like someone else saying, I'm going to climb Mount Everest. <laughs> 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 but that's a huge commitment. Yeah, you're now committed. Is that like your specialty, though? Is that like what no, your kids come to you it's for? Not my, a specialty implies that it has in it a certain level of deliciousness yeah. and competence. <laughs> so your French toast is not... I'm saying there's a few mothers coming over, yeah. I think, and I'm going to try and bust out some cooking, which is really, really unusual. I wish you the best of luck, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hey, thank you, guys. What a treat. You've been, hey. been lovely. A pleasure. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. you. Chris, I'm Brad. Hey, how you doing? Good. All right? I'm the executive producer. Why did we wrap that up? I thought we had to do two interviews together. Well, you can do a second one. Just one. You, you I'm so confused. Do I'll do some liners now. Are you recording? Okay. okay, here we go. Thanks, guys, for that. That was lovely. Yeah, thank you. Hi, this is Chris from Coldplay, and you're listening to The Zach Sang Show. You're listening to The Zach Sang Show. Hi, this is Chris from the band Coldplay, and you're listening to The Zach Sang Show. Wait, that's the same one. Oh, that's not. Hi, I'm Chris Martin. I don't like ever saying Chris Martin. It, it sounds so weird to me. You know when people refer to themselves as themselves? Yeah. It's dangerously close to that. Yeah. You know who loves this show? Chris Martin. And I know because I'm he. (laughs) See, it just sounds terrible. My good friend, Chris Martin. No, here we go. Hi, this is Chris from Coldplay and you're listening to the Zach Sang Show. Oh, to Zach Sang Show. There's no the, there's no definite article. Wow. Hi, this is Chris from Coldplay and you're listening to Zach Sang Show. There's no thee. He doesn't need a thee. He's that big. He does without basic grammar. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Chris from Coldplay, and here's our new song on the Zach Sang Show. On Zach Sang Show. Hi, it's Chris from Coldplay, and you're listening to Zach Sang Show. Wait, this, now there's a thee again. <laughs> Hi, this is Chris from Coldplay. Hi. Hi, this is Chris from Coldplay, and you're listening to the Zach Sang Show Podcast Network. The Zach Sang Podcast Network. <laughs> You're listening to O one zero four five XLO PR two D two B three CPO on Intergalactic Radio, and that is a message from Chris Martin, who is me. Thank you. Great, that's how you do liners, everybody. <laughs> Wait till you get to my age. This is an encore. This is this is an encore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm having a great time. But, I'll go in like five, ten minutes, whatever you feel like. Th- thank you. Zach Sang Show. It is an <laughs> encore with Chris Martin. We're back round two. I feel like, is this going to, if it's not working in two minutes, I'll just walk out. Yeah, just, <laughs> just leave. And then you really have a story. No, we, we have a few more questions. I mean, Dan, Jill, and, and I want to start with, you know, my, my roommate's mom, want, uh, I invited her to come to just like watch the interview today. And I never really do that, but I knew she was a fan. And Your roommate's mom. Yeah, but she said no. And the reason why she said no... <laughs> was because she considers you too much of a legend. She was afraid that she was going to make a fool out of herself. Oh, that's very sweet. What's her name? Her name is Donna. Donna? Yeah. Or Donna? D- Donna. 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 How do you spell that? D-O-N-N-A. That's Donna, isn't it? Donna. 
Oh, God, man, I, my ears are going funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you consider yourself a legend? I mean, does, 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 that, like, does that like play into your daily brain no. at all? No? No, of course not. I consider myself a very lucky man, and uh, I work hard, and I love yeah. what I do. And I understand that some people appreciate it too, but I also spend most of the day just being a normal person like everybody else does. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you go on stage in a stadium and you get that rush of people and you think, God, maybe I'm really special. But then you're like, no, no, that's, you're just doing your job. And but, but that's something that's acquired over time. Because you look at that wall of people who have come in here, right? And these are the, these are the next generation, yeah. cold plays and everything. Mm, yeah. They don't have that. A lot of them come in here and most of them, you know, they'll sit down and they have that mentality, you know, of a legend status before ever really, you know, meeting that. Uh, do, really? Do you really think that? I, I think some of them do. I, I do. I, 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 you know. Well, I would say two things. One is, um, I've, I don't know who you're talking about. Two is, uh, if you're in a band of people that have been together for a long time, yeah. if one of you gets a little um, full of themselves, it doesn't really fly with the others. See? Do you see what I mean? It keeps you grounded. For example, there are certain things that I just know now not to even bother to do because I'll get this look from our drummer. <laughs> <laughs> Which, for those who can't see, is just a flared yeah, nostril. Yeah, it's, it's scary. Like, if he flares both his nostrils, it's like a bull. <laughs> <laughs> and it means he's about to charge, so I stop whatever I'm doing. Last time you got that look, do you remember? I haven't had it for a while, to be honest, because I know. Yeah. You know what, Will's, uh, this is our drummer's called Will. He's not going to go for this. But it's, it's when you come in and say, hey, let's do a, a massive car commercial for $20 billion. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even have to say anything. He'd just be like, which means... <laughs> Stop what you're talking about. Not happening. <laughs> yeah. Jill, Dan. So, um, what's the difference between working with Beyonce and Rihanna? Because you've done songs with both of them. The B and Re differential. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I was hoping we'd get to this. <laughs> this is my area of expertise. Uh, no, there's no. There's just two different types of legends. Okay. Legend. That I mean, they're just both so amazing. They're both so. I'm so grateful to both of them at different times for coming in and doing that um you know i'm i'm more friends with beyonce so i you know it was yeah. um but i rihanna's voice is just one of my favorite things in the universe and so both was just a, it was just a treat that's what that's what it really felt like like wow we're really these these people that i just think are the bee's knees are gonna in fact the whole bee or I, the reese knees the reese knees and the bee's knees thank you <laughs> hey look at that um that was great Thank you so I much. think you'll be here longer than a year. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so it's just, it's like a dream come true, really. Yeah. I mean, if you, no one, I don't, like I said, I don't think of the word legend or anything, but I do around people that I think are legends, I think they are. So I still get that excitement of being a people's fan. Yeah. And if someone comes in to work on your music and just delivers so beautifully, I get that whole goosebump thing of like, wow. Would you ever release an album the way that Beyonce just did? Um, of me w in videos with lots of sexy dresses on. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, exactly I it. I think that's what we should do. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Next one. Next, Next question. Next question. <laughs> no, no, no. You're friends with Beyonce and Jay-Z, like you've mentioned. Do you know the truth behind Becky with the good hair? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's yeah. you. You're yeah. Becky. Yeah. yeah. But right. do you know the whole story? Do you, do you I know? don't really know what you're talking about. Okay, well, it's, Beyonce's new album, she mentioned like Becky with the good hair. Yeah, in the song Sorry. Uh, yeah, a whole bunch of like cheating rumors. Like, oh. Do you know anything about their past? Because, I mean, you're... <laughs> what? He's friend of them. He's okay. known them for a long time. I don't know if he knows anything about it. So, wait. I'm so sorry. So, the question... I don't follow tabloid media. So, is there something to do with... People this, are saying the whole album is, like, ch hinting towards cheating. Oh, I see. And she calls out Becky with the good hair. And people are like, who's Becky with the good hair? Is, is there even truth to it? Well, Jay and I have been, you know, seeing each other on and off for about 24 years. <laughs> <laughs> but it's purely platonic and we just go bowling together, but people get the wrong idea because we're talking about walking around with big balls. <laughs> Thank you for being so honest. Thank you. I'm, I'm just had, glad to have it off my chest. <laughs> no, the truth is I don't know what you're talking about and okay. I just like <laughs> the fine. album. Okay. Okay, before you go, I, you know... In oh, I have to go now because yeah, I no, mentioned bowling. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get your take on... Y y y the way you attack negativity and you've centered yourself and you, yeah. you've kind of become one with yourself in the universe, I've been really inspired by it. And really? It, oh, thanks. Yeah, so. it's really great. Y your approach to negativity is really, in my <clears throat> mind, it, it's a game changer. How do you deal with it? I, I, I don't. Do you ever get negativity? To, do you, I'm, so, I'm sure sometimes you 
Does anything ever get you guys down? All the time. Really? Yeah, and it, it, it does get challenging, and, and that's been something with me is how do you manage it, right? How, how do you, you, you're able to find the good in almost everything, right? Well, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah. Because the only option is to find the bad and everything, and that makes that just makes you feel awful. Yeah. Uh, my answer to you is this: it's <clears throat> partly because I saw that my kids are growing up in a time where social media is so hyper aggressive, mm -hmm. and so I felt like, well, I have to set the example to them of like, you know, what people are going to say weird stuff about you, but don't just let it. Like Jay Z says, just dirt off your shoulder. It doesn't mean anything. And so really in trying to help them out, it's helped me out, you know, as yeah. a sort of bonus because in telling them, you know, especially growing up now, you're going to get a lot, especially if you put yourself out there on Instagram or whatever, uh. you're always going to get crazy stuff. And just to understand that that isn't real and, um, and it's also okay. Uh. That's, I think, one thing to remember about if someone doesn't like your music or doesn't like your show, that's totally okay. There's so much choice in the world of entertainment it's like if you want to come to our concert then you're going to have the best time and I'm so grateful but if you don't I, re I really don't mind it's okay amazing you see what I mean yeah so I think that once you let go of that megalomaniacal need to win everybody over that's a big relief and that's I'm in the process of doing that yeah but you're young man and, so, and you need to have that drive of course yeah. but you, what you want maybe, maybe a way to do it is like to sort of reset your intention. Like, I, I, I want to reach everyone that would appreciate being reached. Done. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to slam this show down well, their throats. Well, it's a better <laughs> show overall, right? Yeah. Because if you're talking to the people who actually want to listen yeah. to you, it's a better relationship that's being formed. I like yeah. how this turned into like an advice show. No. <laughs> well, I'm nearly 76, so <laughs> yes, get me while you can. I'm going through a breakup if you have any advice on that. Or... Let it go. You're exactly where you're supposed to be and something better will come along. Wow, thank you. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful. Anyone Anything from you, Dan? <laughs> well, I mean, just... Uh, you want to know the inside scoop on Kanye? <laughs> do, you, do you have anything? How's, how are Kim and Kanye? Are they doing all right? Well, I mean, uh, I've been outside the house now for a few weeks, and come, <laughs> the comings and goings seem very normal. Wow. <laughs> also, quickly, what is that stuff you keep putting in your mouth? Oh, that's a, that's a liquid uh, heroin. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you keep this all going all day. No, oh, you mean uh, I have, like, this singing oil. Oh, okay. Really? Oh, you really... really Thanks for calling me out on that. <laughs> well, yeah, no, 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 I, I was like, is he just putting perfume in or cologne in his mouth? Because it looks like a little cologne bottle you keep putting inside. I'm, I'm drinking, uh, well, I don't know, what's the, what's the famous cologne? Uh, Aqua de Gio. Yeah. I wore that in the eighth grade. You did? Armani. How did it work out for you? It failed. <laughs> I'm a virgin at 22. It's sad. <laughs> Aqua de Gio. Well, maybe you want to switch it up. Yeah. Maybe Blue by Chanel. I hear it's nice. Yeah. yeah. Do that. I know. I know way too many <laughs> fragrance titles. Yeah. Well, that's okay, man. You've yeah. got to have a hobby. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> uh, anything else? Anything? All right, I'm going to go now because you've run out of questions. You, yeah, you, you, I, I mean... We're really scraping the barrel now. No. We're anything good. else? But just call me if you have any more questions about perfume or dating. Thank you. Thank you, Okay, Chris guys. Martin. I'm always here for you. A head full of dreams. A tour. It's coming uh, to the United States this summer. Yeah. You have so many stops and we're going to go. I want to go to uh, the LA stop. We're going to be You're there. very welcome. We're yeah. playing here. I'm excited. We can get, I know the band, so I can get you tickets. Oh, thank Yay! you so much. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right. Chris Martin, <laughs> All thank right, you, see you, sir. Guys. Take care, bye-bye. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Who, who else are you a fan of? Do you, I mean, anybody out there? Lots of people, yeah.